how to get prescription skincare medication without seeing a dermatologist or a doctor and without going to some of these shady websites that sell random creams from overseas that have actually left people with burns, scars, and future skin problems. There are ways that you can get prescription medications. We're talking both topical that you put on the skin and oral that you take without having to have insurance, without actually having to see a dermatologist in person, and even if you don't have access to a derm or doctor, we're gonna get you covered in this video, okay? Let's first talk about why this is a problem. I know that healthcare systems around the world are all very different, but here in America, it can be kind of an issue. If someone doesn't have medical insurance, a bill could be thousands of dollars. And depending on what kind of insurance you have, if it's HMO or PPO, you might have to see a regular doctor who then refers you to a specialist like a derm, versus a PPO where you can see any doctor you want, but you might have to pay both upfront fees, and you might have to pay for a percentage of that visit. Depending on your insurance, you might have to pay for the entire visit, even if you do have the insurance. And even if you do, you also have to pay for prescriptions. Just the way for food and for skincare, we can have brand name and then like the knockoff or non-brand name. Same thing happens in the prescription world. You can have a brand name prescription or you can have the generic form. Generally, the generic form is less expensive. However, it can still be ridiculous. And depending on what your doctor and dermatologist says, you can choose between having a generic form, having a prescription form based on how they're meant to work and which one is most suitable for you. Now the biggest thing with prescriptions, whether it's oral that you take or topical that you put on your skin, are things such as side effects, things such as contraindications. If you take certain medications, could they stop other medications from working? If you have a pre-existing medical condition or a comorbidity, could you be using something that makes your condition worse? And this is where things get scary because prescriptions are so expensive, some people really have their hands tied and they feel the need to go across borders, seeking out prescriptions from other countries just to get their basic medical needs met. And while things like insulin or statins are a completely different conversation, we are keeping this conversation to skincare, talking about things such as acne prescriptions, maybe rosacea, eczema, and yes, even a little bit about hair loss and a little bit about lashes. I do want to caution you that there are websites that will sell prescription skincare, and these are usually from other countries, and these are unregulated. Uh, these websites are pretty shady, they pop up out of nowhere, and they basically sell people prescriptions. And let me tell you, if you are trying to buy a hydroquinone cream, and you don't know that it's laced with mercury, which yes, is detrimental to the skin, you can cause major issues. The reason that these medications are prescription only is because they can have benefits, but they can have side effects. Acetaminophen, Tylenol, it's great as a painkiller, but one of the side effects is liver failure. If you have a pre-existing condition or you're on a medication or you have a lifestyle that doesn't allow you to take that, that's a problem. With prescription medications, those stakes get much higher. Uh, even with hyperpigmentation, if you do have a couple of issues and you want to try hydroquinone, see a doctor or a derm, get it at a low amount, because if you get it off of like a black market or like under the table, you could cause rebound hyperpigmentation. Again, there's major instances where this is laced with mercury and it can damage and destroy the skin. But think about what it takes to actually see a derm. You A, probably have to have insurance or you have to go see someone in a private practice. You have to make an appointment, which could take you three to six months. And considering that we are in a panorama, a lot of practitioners are not taking patients unless they are necessary, unless it is a skin cancer or a mole check or an allergic reaction. So a lot of these elective procedures aren't being seen until a couple months down the line. Then let's say the you actually get there, you have to pay a copay. You have to have the visit. Do you have to see the doctor multiple times? Again, if you have an HMO, do you have to see a primary doctor who then refers you to a dermatologist? This entire thing could take six months before you even get a prescription in hand. And then based on the cost of both the visit as well as the cost of the prescription, can you even afford to do that? And can you afford to do that regularly, both the time constraint and the medication constraint? Now, I do want to make it clear that when I was younger and struggling with acne, I blamed derms for a lot of this. I thought that it was horrible that they run their practices like this and I would go in and only see a doctor for 15 minutes and they would write me a prescription with barely even knowing my name and it felt horrible. And through seeing 23 doctors and dermatologists before I found one that really listened to my skin, I realized that that isn't always how it is. And it's usually not the doctor, it's usually the insurance company that is adding pressure on these doctors and dermatologists to see patients quickly and 
rush them through. But I understand why it can be a really bad experience for many people, especially if you are not doing private healthcare and you do have to see someone that is in your insurance's network. Because yes, the insurance that you're with dictates who you can and can't see and whether or not they're in their special network. It's, it's great. It's just, it's, it's a nightmare. The other thing that I've run into is when you go to see a derm and you see their assistant, you see an MP, you see someone else who works at that office, you see a different derm, and that can be fantastic. NPs are qualified as well to write prescriptions, to help people. They are great. But I will say there are a few offices, not just dermatology, even plastic surgery, even other clinics, where you go in thinking you're going to see a doctor, you see them for two minutes, and then they pass you off to someone who's an assistant, might not even be a full-blown RN, and they are giving you recommendations or advice that might be helpful, but you came there to see the doctor and you feel a little bit bamboozled. That is rare, that does not happen all the time, and you have to think that as a dermatologist or someone who owns a clinic, you can't see 150 patients in a day, there's just not enough time. Uh, but there are the rare instances and the rare offices in which that happens. And I think that's important to point out because from the consumer perspective, remember the consumers are the ones that are paying the doctors. If you come to me for a skin consult, you pay me. If you go to a dermatologist to get a skin consult, you are paying them. If you don't like the service that you're receiving, if you don't feel heard, you have every reason to get up and leave. But when talking about skincare or our insecurities or something that we wear on our face or an allergic reaction or like weird bumps in weird areas of our body, that can feel really personal and uncomfortable. And so a lot of people are scared to speak up about A, what's actually going on, and B, you trust the doctor or the nurse or the practitioner as an expert. And so you don't want to speak up or speak over them or even voice your opinions in some case. And I want you to remember that you pay these practitioners and you do have to speak up. But again, that's not what this video is about. This video is about how to get prescription medications if you don't want to go through that, if you don't want to see a derm, if you can't go in person. Telemedicine is amazing, but there are some online pharmacies essentially and some companies that have been providing prescriptions online. And we are talking medical grade prescriptions, actual prescription medications that yes, dermatologists provide, but at less expensive prices, you don't need insurance to get them. And often you can see a derm through telemedicine, meaning through your phone or just uploading pictures pictures to a website. We're talking about these companies like Curology, like Apostrophe and Dermatica. And there are a couple other ones like Rory and one that starts with an A or something like that. There's a bunch of them out there that keep popping up. But I think the reason they keep popping up is because they are giving people options when some people don't have any. And $25 for a bottle of Dermatica or Curology or Apostrophe versus, you know, a $20 copay plus a $300 insurance bill and another $300 medication bill. Yeah, plus the time, that stuff adds up. So let's break down these prescription options, how they actually work, how it's legal for them to give you acne prescriptions, both topical and medications oral, without causing HIPAA violations, Health Insurance Portability Act violations. And we'll actually getting you the care that you need at a price and at a timeline that actually works for you. So we'll start off with Curology because they seem to be like the most popular. They definitely do a lot of influencer marketing, but essentially they are a company that started out of San Francisco that wanted to make skincare, specifically acne care, accessible to everyone. And they really hit hard on the acne stuff. They do have a couple of different medications that they normally pull from, and each little bottle that a customer gets has some blend of these medications. We're talking about things like tretinoin, that retin-A that we all know and love. They have niacinamide, which we love, vitamin B3, and can also help with some pigmentation and oil control. They have azelaic acid, which can help with both acne and rosacea, and azelaic acid is safe for those who are pregnant or nursing. They have zinc, they have clindamycin, they have tranexamic acid, and they have other ingredients like these, specifically like the clindamycin. They have some antibacterial options for those who are really struggling, and even like the zinc or some of these antifungal medications. If you are someone who struggles with fungal acne, which again is not actually acne, it's not actually a thing, we've done an entire video debunking it, um, but this fungal acne that people are so afraid of, which is actually not as common as you think, um, they do have medications that can treat that and blends that they create for each person. Now here's the thing. How are you supposed to get prescription medications without seeing a doctor? How do you make sure that you're not going to have a side effect or that your medication is not going to contradict another medication that's in your routine? That is why you do actually see a doctor, but it's through telemedicine and it's kind of on your own time. I've purchased Curology a few times before. Fun fact, they've been trying to work with me for like four years and I have put them off thus far. 
but I have spent my own money on their products. I have tried a lot of their products and kind of tried to understand the process and I have some old videos that I just haven't edited yet. Um, I film a lot of videos. I just don't have the time to edit them. Anyways, I digress. From the experience, it takes them a couple days to get back to, but you are essentially uploading your photos, your previous patient history, and your skincare information up to their website. And a licensed and certified professional looks that over. Now, what I do find different about Curology is that it's not always a derm that's looking it over. It is always someone who is licensed and accredited to do so. Sometimes this is a nurse practitioner, sometimes this is a general practitioner, physician, doctor, could be a derm, etc. But I think it's important to point out. And again, nurse practitioners are great. All of these people can take a look at your skin and understand what's going on. All of these people have the licenses, the abilities, and the expertise to write prescriptions. And once they kind of go through that, that's what they do. They take a look at your skin and they write those prescriptions. Now, this does rely on the actual patient, again, you or the person who's filling that out, to know their skin and know their medication history properly. There are a lot of people who come in clinic or like into a dermatology office and they can't even tell you what medications they're on. And it's hard, right? When you say ketoconazole and clindamycin phosphate and tranexamic acid, like that's a lot to remember. So like, I get it. But some of these online forms, um, you can run into a few issues if a person doesn't know the active ingredients that they're using or they forget to put a prescription in. Anyways, I found that Curology is great because they actually log uh, your photos and your progress. Um, when I recently logged back into Curology, I saw my photos from literally four to five years ago, which was amazing to kind of remind myself how far I've come, which was great. But having practitioners look over these in a telemedicine way, I think that is kind of how they control pricing as well because they don't have to pay for a location for you to come into, right? They don't have to pay for that physical space. They are paying these experts for their expertise and they can check these online and give people prescriptions. Speaking of price, how much does Curology cost? Curology has been known to give this free trial, so it's only $5 for a prescription, um, but I don't think they tell you how much the trial or like the sample version is versus the full size. And once you actually start paying for Curology, the price does go up. So the first trial, I think it's only about 5 or $6, which is arguably really good. It's only the cost of shipping but you do have to kind of sign up for their service, which reoccurs on a monthly basis. Once you get the full size products, I think they range between 24 and like 55 or $60. And for a month's worth of skincare that is prescription and prescribed to you, uh, that includes the price of a consultation and check-in, that is arguably really good. That is some people's copay. What is also cool about Curology is that they do have other products. So for example, they have body acne washes, they have pimple patches now, which I have to admit, I actually really like their pimple patches. But these are kind of like bonuses that are added on to like that regular routine. The full-sized cleanser is 2.7 ounces and the full-size moisturizer is 1.7. But again, they aren't really super clear about how big the full size is versus how big like the small tester or travel sizes are. And I actually believe that in the past they changed or lowered the sizing. And I think people were still happy with what they were getting, um, but that is something to keep in mind. They don't have returns or cancellations, but again, with a custom blended prescription formula, I'm not really surprised about that. The one thing that I think is a huge barrier for many people is that they are only available in the United States. So no, not even Canada, not Mexico, not the UK, etc. cetera. Um, and that is very frustrating, especially since they do use FDA approved ingredients. They are the most popular and I guess like the most well-known one and I guess it is because they do put a lot of money into marketing. We've probably all seen like Emma Chamberlain's Curology video. I know Hiram has done some with them. Again, they have approached me with offers. And let me say, I haven't seen Emma Chamberlain's or anybody else's contracts, but like, they got money. <laughs> like they have a lot of cash to play with. And the question is how do they have so much money? Are they overcharging people on skincare? Like how can they afford to pay influencers this much? And I must say like it's a pretty amount and um low key like my financial people are mad at me for turning it down, but I'm like, yo, until I really try this on my own and pay my own money into it, I don't want to recommend it to others until I really understand the process. So that's what that is on my part. But I don't think that they are changing the formulas or lowering the sizes in order to pay influencers more to promote it. They actually got venture capital funding when they first started. You see, when Curology first popped up, they were very, very popular. A lot of people liked what they were offering and had to say. And investors, basically people with big money who wanted to make more money said, hey, we will give you cash, we will give you funds to grow your business so that when the whole thing grows, we can make more of a profit as well. And because they got all of this venture capital funding, kind of at the get-go. I mean, it's San Francisco, it's the Silicon Valley. This stuff happens all the time and it's not a bad thing. It's like, yeah, I'll lend you money so that you can make more, just pay me back a little bit extra. 
that essentially happened and that's why they were able to give so many people this free trial five dollars for prescription custom skincare for a month's worth like that's pretty good and then you know paying influencers very very hefty sums of money um, to promote it and they're able to do that without cutting corners because again they have this VC funding and again arguably you know nurse practitioners generally aren't as expensive as dermatologists that is a huge generalization but that is one of the other ways that they might be saving cost as well without compromising on quality. Now, I have to go dig into like my old Curology bottles versus the newer ones. I haven't been on it. I'll tell you about the two that I've been using, which we're going to speak about in a moment here. I'll tell you about the other ones that I've been using because I haven't been putting Curology on my face currently, um, other than their pimple patches, which are arguably really good. Um, but for me, I haven't noticed a decrease in quality or a decrease in fill size or any issues like that. And if you are someone who wants to try a $5 sample size or if you have between five and fifty dollars and you want something that is easy to check in with they have one of the easiest systems to go through it's a lot but especially if you don't have insurance and you live within the continental usa it's a pretty good option so one of the bigger barriers to entry with Curology is the fact that they're only available in the United States. What about people who are international? And that's where Dramatica comes in. So Dramatica is also like a prescription skincare option that connects you with dermatologists, only they are based out of the UK. And they do ship to a couple different places internationally, including certain states within the United States. One of the great things is that they do combine different ingredients into this custom blended tube and they are the ones who actually blend them themselves. They're kind of acting as cosmetic chemists. And I do believe they have some ingredients that some of these other brands like, you know, Curology or Rory or some of these other ones don't have. Now Dramatica usually comes in a little serum. They do have different options and of course what your blend is is going to be different depending on what your skin has. But it comes in a little bottle and it's only $24.99 and their pricing is really transparent across the board. Now when I first got mine I was actually a little bit surprised. I was like oh wow this is a lot smaller than I expected but they actually do fill it pretty well. And I wanted to make sure that my experience wasn't an anomaly or that it was universal and I did find other people specifically on Reddit talking about how their one month supply actually lasted like two months. Some person had like 72 pumps in theirs. And the Dramatica one I did actually notice that mine lasted about a month and a half so longer than it should have. Um, but the thing with Dramatica is that because they blend it themselves you do have to use it a little bit more quickly. So you know Curology I've let sit like underneath my sink for a year or so. <laughs> with Dramatica after you know, five or six months, I wouldn't be doing that just to make sure that it's just as efficacious. And the other thing about Dramatica that I appreciate is that they do work directly with dermatologists and they actually have a focus on education. Uh, I love Dr. Mamina. She's triple board certified. I follow her on Instagram. I am obsessed with her and her mom. They create great TikToks and she's just so humble, down to earth and relatable. And she actually works with Dramatica. She's one of the derms that they have on board. And she and Dermatica work really hard to educate on their socials. I know Curology has a larger social following and some of these other companies do as well, but I like that their focus is on more education. They aren't promoted as heavily, but again, I like that they are international and that they do have options for multiple people. And something that sets them apart is that you can blend. Again, because it's a prescription, Technically, you shouldn't be able to return something, but Dramatica is one of the only companies that says they have like a 30 day money back guarantee. That is for new customers only, so if you've been with them for a while, then you don't get that. But the fact that they are guaranteeing that people will like or appreciate the product uh, if they try it, like with a money back guarantee, that's really good. And again, for only $25, um, yeah, it's really comparable. They do have some good ingredients, and again, they do blend them. They do treat things, I think their main concerns are things like acne and wrinkling, but they also have help for things like rosacea. Um, and again, it's one of these similar systems where they kind of rely on you to know what your skin type is, what your needs are, what your previous prescriptions are, to actually type that in. And then it's reviewed by a practitioner or a derm. And because they are international, uh, I would have to double check this, but I know when I was doing mine, I'm pretty sure that they match you to practitioners that are from your country, because there can be different laws in regulations in the UK versus here in the US. Um, but if you are someone who internationally is looking for options, this is a really good one. Now, the place where both Curology and Dramatica fall short is that they don't have oral medications. But that's where we talk about apostrophe, which is arguably the one that I have heard about the least. 
apostrophe seemed to like pop up out of nowhere. I don't see influencers promoting it. I know that they got a little bit of venture capital funding, which has allowed them to create really good products at decent prices. But what's interesting is that this apostrophe brand actually brands themselves as more of a pharmacy. So whereas Dermatica kind of acts as the chemist and mixes it itself, and whereas Curology kind of acts as like, you know, like the front end office, I feel like Apostrophe is more of the pharmacy. They have a bunch of different stuff, including oral medications that they give to patients. They do claim that they have a 24 hour reply. When I was going through, mine wasn't in 24 hours, but it was within a day and a half. So like give or take, that's pretty good. And they actually have a little bit of a different system because they first have you do a skin consult. So with a practitioner, mine was a derm, that is $20. And they're one of the companies that actually separates that price of consultation out from the product but the product is only $25. And when you do actually sign up with them after your consults, that $20 consult fee actually gets taken off your bill um, for the actual product. And I think they bill in like three month increments, so it's $75 for three months, but that initial consult is taken off, so it ends up being 55 for three months. And the thing that I love about Apostrophe, and I don't know why more people don't speak about them, is that they actually have these oral medications. They have things for hormonal control, they have oral antibiotics, and again, you are seen by a dermatologist, by a practitioner who takes a look at your skin and look at your current medications and recommends either topical or oral prescriptions based on what you need and based on what you want. The other thing that I really liked about Apostrophe is that they openly say, if we don't think that we can treat your stuff, we're not going to take your money. We're not going to treat you. You know, because a lot of times people think they have acne, they upload a photo of this and you need to get that tested. Maybe it is a staph infection. Maybe it is malassezia or pterosperm folliculitis. And you would need to do a KOH test in office to see that. They are really upfront about saying, we are not afraid to turn down patients and turn down money if we don't think we can treat them, uh, which is really, really awesome. They do have a very wide array of prescriptions that they can give and write. Um, there are a ton of topical ones, but what's also interesting is that they have, again, oral, and they even have prescriptions for male pattern hair loss as well as for eyelashes. If you're looking for like a Latisse growth serum, they have prescriptions for that, which is very interesting because, again, these other companies don't have oral medications, and if you need to switch from oral to topical, from topical to oral, if you're like, oh my god, my hair is falling out, telogen effluvium, I'm really stressed out because of the world pansexual that we're in, they can prescribe those to you if you're having that consult with someone who looks you over and approves you for it. If you look at their website, they have everything from tretinoin, which is that retin-A that we love, all the way to azelaic acid and clindamycin, which can help with that topical bacteria. Then they do have doxycycline and minocycline. Those are oral antibiotics that can really help for some people. They have a lot of these medications that I honestly don't know if there's anywhere else that you can get them without going in to see a dermatologist or a doctor. This is the only online place that I'm aware of that. But again, there might be more that I just don't know of. What I also really liked is that they did an open like charity campaign for CV19. Uh, we're gonna call it that so that the algorithm doesn't get mad at me and like block this video for like, you know, or put like a Wikipedia article at the bottom. Have you seen where YouTube's been doing that? I don't particularly hate it. I just don't wanna get canceled, you know? But for CV19, they actually created like a hand sanitizer campaign and they made donations to people in need, which I think is really cool. And I don't know if Dermatica or Curology or Rory or these other companies have done that. At least I'm not aware of it. Um, but the fact that Apostrophe did and that they're open about it is really awesome. Their bottles are a decent size. Again, they're pretty comparable. And um, their prescription medications, what's actually nice about the oral ones, you know what oral medications look like. They're not the most aesthetically pleasing. These ones are actually packaged really cute. And like, you know, when you open up your cabinet and like see your prescription sitting there, you know, you don't feel, you know, it makes you feel better to look at something aesthetically pleasing. Like it sounds so dumb, but for me, it does make a difference. Again, the pricing is really good, 25 bucks or 75 for three months. I haven't gotten like multiple prescriptions on top of one another. I'm sure depending on what you're getting and if it's hormonal plus antibiotics, plus topical, plus hair and lashes, that might be an extra fee. Um, I'd have to look into that a little bit more. But overall, I don't know why people aren't talking about them. Is it because they're not paying people to talk about them? Like I literally do not 
not know, but I think that they're a great company that again offers a lot more options. And from my current understanding, I believe that they are only available in the US, at least that's what I can see. Um, if you are from the UK or Canada or Mexico or India or somebody else, could you please see if you can get it there? Because it wasn't super clear on their website, whereas for Curology and for Dermatica, it was pretty clear. Um, but I like that they have oral medication options. And if you're trying to compare Curology versus Dermatica versus Apostrophe, there are pros and cons to each one. And I think it comes down to pricing. It comes down to how much you like the practitioner that you're matched with and how that quiz goes for you. Um, and it also comes down to your location because unfortunately there are physical borders and barriers that prevent some of this stuff to getting to certain customers or certain patients. Um, but I think at the end of the day, it is really revolutionizing healthcare. You know, just the way Uber and Lyft have revolutionized taxis, or Airbnb has revolutionized what we think of as a hotel. When you think of government or medicine, these industries are so heavily regulated that things move very slowly, and they are not fast to innovate. But I feel like, especially since the world was shut down and like people need options, these sort of companies are really innovating the way Uber and Lyft and Airbnb have done, but they're doing this in the healthcare industry. And again, they're still getting patients connected with professionals to get the care they need, but at better prices, they're cutting out the insurance companies and the problems that come with the insurance companies, like you know having to rush patients through on a certain time schedule or having to pay these huge upfront fees and co-pays. And they're delivering it straight to people's houses so that if you're an introvert or if you're just you know afraid of being in the middle of a pediatric, you can stay home and watch YouTube videos and get your prescriptions delivered to your door as opposed to having to go to the pharmacy or to wait six months in an office to get that little slip. If you have tried any of these, let me know your thoughts. If there are more prescription or customized skincare brands you want me to review, let me know and maybe we can do that. And if you see some of those sketchy, come buy my questionable product websites that pop up and shut down, send them to me. Maybe we could purchase some products, do a deep dive with some dermatologists and chemists. We can put these things in a mass spectrometer or something and see if they're actually infiltrated with heavy metals and other things that you find on the black market. Because you don't need to use Tor to find the black market of skincare and the fact that some of these scam artists are playing with people's health is really really scary but that's why having actual companies like these three that we just went through um, and actual dermatologists and practitioners doing things in a way that works for patients is a relief so there's another video here that you should definitely watch there is a subscribe and like button if you haven't done that already so be sure to hit those to stay tuned when we do go live when we have dermatologists on as guests or when we talk more about customized or prescription skincare always remember to be beautiful both inside and out and I cannot wait to see you in one of these next videos <laughs> love you guys bye